All right, strap in everyone, because today we're taking a deep dive into some seriously mind-bending territory. Oh yeah, we're going deep. We're tackling the human singularity. Oh, small feet. And our guide for this journey is, well, none other than Chris Langan. A man who's been called, you know, the smartest person in the world. <laughs> So, no pressure. <laughs> We've got this fascinating article summarizing a video interview with him. Yeah, and let me tell you, it is packed with ideas. It will probably reshape how you see the future, no doubt about it. Absolutely. So, I think the best place to start is with this idea that Langan puts forward. Yeah. He presents a different perspective on the singularity than what we usually hear. Totally, yeah. Most people, when they hear singularity, they think of, like... This moment when yeah. technology just explodes, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Humans are just left in the dust. Left behind, struggling to catch up. Exactly. But Langan, he's talking about something else entirely. Okay, I'm intrigued. It's a human-driven evolution. Yeah. Where our consciousness plays the leading role. So, two potential paths. Mm -hmm. Two very different futures. Yeah. On one hand, we've got the technological singularity. Right. AI might surpass human intelligence, maybe even become self-aware. The classic sci-fi scenario. Exactly. And on the other hand, we have Langan's human singularity. Right, which is all about us. About us evolving and shaping our own destiny. Yeah, taking control. So already I'm curious where he takes this, where he goes with this. Well, this is where Langan, um, he starts to sound the alarm bells a little bit. Oh. He's worried that if we just let technology run wild. Yeah. We could end up in a future where a handful of powerful entities... Like who? Think. Uh, mega corporations or um, tech elites. Okay. They end up controlling everything. Yeah. You know? Well, on the shots. And the scary part is they might not have humanity's best interests at heart. That's a chilling thought, I have to say. Yeah, not a very comforting picture of the future. So it's not just about technology becoming super advanced. It's about... It's about who controls it. Right. And what their intentions are. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. See, the human singularity, on the other hand, yeah. it's about humanity as a whole taking control, okay, making conscious choices, and evolving in a way that benefits everyone, not just the select few. Benefits everyone. So paint that picture for me. Okay, so imagine a world where yeah. instead of relying on some tech fix, right. we actually level up as humans. We evolve. Yeah, we solve these huge problems like climate change, like inequality. Yeah. By fundamentally changing how we think. Okay. And how we interact with each other and with the world. So is that what Langan is getting at with this human singularity? You're getting it. Okay, good. He sees the human singularity as a path to something called... What's it called? The Omega Point. Omega Point. It's right. this concept. Um, it was actually borrowed from a philosopher named Teilhard de Chardin. Okay. And it describes a state of ultimate human evolution. Ultimate human evolution. So what does that look like? Well, imagine a world where we've reached this higher level of consciousness, where we understand our connection to everything around us, and where we're united by a common purpose. So it's not just about individual growth. It's about collective evolution. Exactly. It's about the whole of humanity reaching a new level of understanding and harmony. Okay. I'm starting to see the contrast here. Yeah. Down one path. The technological singularity. Right. We risk becoming slaves to technology controlled by algorithms. Yeah, losing our autonomy, our freedom. Slips down the other, the human singularity. We become masters of our own destiny, shaping the future consciously and collectively. Okay, that's a powerful image, I have to say. It's a choice, a but... fundamental choice that we're facing right now. So where does this idea of... Uh, transhumanism fit into all of this, you know, uploading our minds, achieving digital immortality. Right, right. Transhumanism. The big topic these days. It's huge. And Langan, I mean, he's pretty skeptical of that whole idea, isn't he? He is, yeah. He argues that consciousness, Yeah. it's not like data that you can just copy and paste. Uh, you can't just upload it to the cloud. Exactly. He believes it's fundamentally tied to our biological existence. So no escaping the physical body? Well, not in the way that transhumanists envision it, at least. Okay, so even if we could create this supercomputer that mimics the human brain, uh -huh. it wouldn't truly replicate the human experience. That's his argument. He thinks there's something special about the way our minds interact with reality, something that can't be replicated artificially. I'm starting to see how this ties into Langan's emphasis on human evolution and consciousness. Right. It's not just about computing power. It's about something more. Something more. Okay. He even uses this term, uh, 
Metamechanical. Metamechanical. To describe the structure of reality, implying it's more than just a complex machine. Okay, this is where I feel like things are about to get really interesting. Oh, yeah. We're going down the rabbit hole here. Let's do it. Because Langan introduces this concept called telecausation. Okay. And it's, well, it's pretty mind-bending. It is, it is. But think of it this way. Our usual understanding of cause and effect is pretty linear. Like dominoes falling one after another. Exactly. A causes B, B causes C. And so on. But Langan's suggesting that um, at the quantum level, things are way more interconnected. Okay, how so? He even has this term for it, telons. Telons. He describes them as these quantum units of causation. Quantum units of causation, okay. So imagine them like a web, not a straight line. Okay, a web of connections. Exactly. Actions happening in different places or even different times could be linked in ways we just don't fully understand yet. So it's not just the simple case of action and reaction anymore. Nope. It's a lot more complex than that. It's like everything's influencing everything else in this. This vast web of connections. Okay, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. It's a big idea for sure. It is. All right. Buckle up, everyone, because if telecausation wasn't enough... We're about to go deeper. Langan throws another curveball with this concept of metasimultaneity. Oh, yeah, metasimultaneity. I'm not even sure I can say it. It's a mouth. But this one builds on the idea of quantum entanglement, right? It does, yeah. You've heard how particles can be linked regardless of distance, right? Yeah, spooky action at a distance. That's the one. Well, Langan takes it even further and suggests that this entanglement, yeah. it doesn't just happen instantaneously. Yeah. It happens outside of our normal understanding of time. Whoa, hold on. Are you saying time isn't linear? Well, it might not be as straightforward as we perceive it. Imagine watching a movie. Okay. Each frame exists individually, but it's the sequence that creates the story. Langan suggests that maybe all moments past, present, future, they might exist like those film frames, interconnected but outside our linear perception of time. So past, present, and future might actually exist all at once, just... That's outside our limited perception. Okay, my brain is officially fried. It's a mind-blowing concept. It is. So Langan proposes that these entangled events... Yeah. They exist in this non-terminal domain. Right, where they're meta-simultaneous. Oh, meta-simultaneous, okay. It challenges, like, everything I thought I knew about how time works. It definitely challenges our everyday experience of time as this rigid line from past to future. Okay, I need a moment to process that. Take your time. It's a lot to take in. We've gone from questioning who controls technology to questioning the nature of time itself. Let's take a breath here, folks, and then uh, delve into Langan's views on life after death. All right. Yeah, that's a big one. It's a question we all ponder, right? Of course. What happens to our consciousness after we die? It's the ultimate mystery. So what does Langan have to say about that? Well, he offers a perspective that aligns with his ideas about consciousness and reality. Okay. He suggests that death might just be the end of our relationship with our current physical body. But not the end of consciousness itself. That's the key point. So are we talking about reincarnation? Mm -hmm. Like a soul moving from one body to the next? He uses this interesting term, terminal body. Terminal body, okay. Think of it like this, your current terminal body yeah. is your physical form. This body. Right, the one you're in right now. Langan suggests that after death, consciousness, yeah. it might attach to a different kind of body. Not necessarily a physical one. Right, not necessarily, but still a vehicle for experience in a different reality. So it's not about coming back in a new physical form, but maybe... You'll be transitioning to a different plane of existence. Okay, now that's a thought-provoking idea. It opens up a lot of possibilities. It does. And Langan doesn't necessarily give us all the answers, does he? No, he leaves a lot open to interpretation, which I think is part of what makes his work so compelling. This has been uh, a lot to absorb already. I know, right? <laughs> We've gone from the potential dangers of technology to the nature of consciousness. To the mysteries of time. And even the possibility of life after death. We've covered some serious ground. We have. And we're just getting started. There's so much more to unpack in Langan's ideas. Stick with us, folks, because in part two, we'll delve deeper into the implications of Langan's vision. We'll explore what it all means for us as individuals and as a species facing the future. It's going to be a wild ride. Buckle up. We'll see you there. Welcome back to our deep dive into the mind of Chris Langan. We're exploring his ideas about the human singularity, a future where human consciousness takes center stage. You know, my head is still spinning from that last segment. Oh, yeah. We covered so much ground already from the potential pitfalls of 
unchecked technological advancement right. to these like mind bending concepts like telecausation and meta simultaneity. It's a lot to take in. It is. It is. But what I find so fascinating about Langham's work yeah. is how he weaves together ideas from different fields. Like what? Philosophy, physics, even theology okay. to create this really intricate worldview. He's not afraid to like cross boundaries. No, not at all. It's like he's pushing us to question everything we thought we knew about reality. He definitely encourages us to think outside the box. Yeah. To consider possibilities that might seem strange. Or even impossible. At first glance, exactly. Let's go back to that fork in the road we talked about earlier. Okay, yeah. The technological singularity versus the human singularity. Right, right. It seems like Langan is presenting these as real choices, yeah, not just theoretical concepts. He's saying, look, this is the crossroads we're at. We're at a pivotal moment. The path we choose now, it could determine the course of our future. Okay, so do we surrender to the allure of technology uh -huh. and risk losing control? Becoming slaves to the machines. Or do we embrace our own evolution and actively shape our destiny? It's a big question, a fundamental question. Those are some pretty high stakes. They are. There's no doubt about that. So Langan's point is that technology itself isn't inherently good or bad. Right. It's neutral. It's a tool. Like any tool. And like any tool, it can be used for different purposes. For creation or destruction. I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if we could use technology to actually enhance our own evolution? Yeah. To help us reach that omega point. That's an interesting idea. Is that part of Langan's vision? Yeah. He definitely sees a role for technology. Okay. But he emphasizes that it needs to be guided by human consciousness. So it's about using technology wisely. Exactly. Not letting it dictate our values or control our lives. We need to be the masters, not the servants. So how does he envision this human singularity actually happening? What are the steps involved in this evolutionary leap? I mean, it sounds pretty massive. It is. It is. But he believes that a fundamental shift in consciousness is key. A shift in consciousness. Yeah. He talks about the need to develop our understanding of the mind to unlock our full potential. It's like those moments when you suddenly see something from a completely different perspective. Right. Like you've been staring at a problem for ages and then suddenly okay. the solution becomes clear. That's a perfect analogy. Like a sudden flash of insight. Exactly. And Langan believes that humanity needs a collective aha moment. Like a global awakening. A shift in consciousness that allows us to see the world and our place in it in a completely new way. So it's not about waiting for some external event or- it's a new gadget to save us. It's about an internal transformation. A conscious choice to evolve as a species. Okay, I'm starting to get the bigger picture here. Yeah. But there's one thing I'm still struggling with. That's that. This concept of metasimultaneity. <sighs> yeah, metasimultaneity, that's a tough one. It's such a mind boggling idea. Yeah. Events existing outside of linear time. I know. It's one of the most challenging aspects of Langan's work. It really is. But try to think about it this way. We experience time yeah. as this straight line. Moving from past to present to future. Right. But what if that's just our limited human perception? Okay. So what if? What if at a deeper level, all yeah. those moments are actually interconnected? So it's like our brains are imposing this linear structure on time, uh -huh. but reality itself might be much more fluid. And interconnected. Okay. That's a lot to process. It is. But if that's true, what does it mean for our understanding of free will? Yeah, that's a good question. If everything is interconnected across time. Does that mean our choices are predetermined? Yeah. Is it all just fate? Well. Langan believes that we do have free will. Okay. But it operates within a larger framework. Imagine a tapestry okay. with a predetermined pattern. Okay, I see where you're going with this. You can choose the colors of the threads. But the overall design is already set. Exactly. You have freedom within constraints. So our choices matter. They do. Even if there's a bigger plan in place. That's his view. That's actually a pretty comforting thought. It is. It suggests we're not just passive players in the grand scheme of things. We have agency. Our choices contribute to the unfolding of reality. This whole conversation has really challenged me to rethink some fundamental assumptions. About how the universe works. It has. That's the power of Langan's work. He really makes you think. He encourages us to question everything, to expand our minds, and consider possibilities we might never have imagined before. We've covered a lot of ground in this episode, and I have a feeling we've only just scratched the surface of Langan's ideas. Well, definitely. But in our final segment, I'd like to bring things back down to earth a bit. Sounds good. 
Let's talk about what all of this means for us as individuals. Okay. Navigating this complex and ever-evolving world. Let's explore the practical implications of Langan's vision and how we can apply his insights to our own lives. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. We've been on quite a journey. We have, exploring some truly mind-bending concepts with Chris Langan and his vision of the human singularity. The nature of consciousness, the mysteries of time, even pondering the possibility of life after death. It's been a wild ride, that's for sure. It has been. But in this final segment, I want to bring things back down to earth a bit. Back to reality. We've talked a lot about these like really abstract concepts, but yeah. what does all this mean for us right. as individuals living in the here and now? That's the key question. Right? right. How do we apply these big ideas to our everyday lives? Let's start with education. Okay, yeah, good place to start. If we're talking about unlocking human potential, mm. Surely education plays a huge role in that. Absolutely. Langan believes that education should be about more than just memorizing facts and passing tests. Yeah, that's not real learning. No, not at all. He emphasizes critical thinking, creativity, okay. and cultivating a deep understanding of ourselves and the universe. So less rote learning, more philosophical discussions. I'm in. You'd be happy to hear that. But how do we actually make that shift. Right. It's a big challenge. It feels like our current education system isn't really set up for that kind of learning. He would agree with you there. Yeah. Langan sees a need for um, a pretty radical overhaul of our education system. Okay. So what would that look like? It's about fostering a lifelong love of learning, encouraging curiosity. Yeah, I like that. And empowering individuals to become uh, active participants in shaping the future. Not just passive consumers of information. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. It's about recognizing that everyone has unique talents and potential. Yeah, everyone has something to offer. And then creating an environment where those talents can flourish. And speaking of flourishing, we can't ignore the role of technology in all of this. Right, technology is everywhere. We're surrounded by it, and it's constantly evolving. At an incredible pace. But, as we discussed earlier, Langan seems to have a bit of a cautious stance when it comes to technology it's not anti-technology though yeah not at all but he stresses the importance of using it mindfully okay yeah and intentionally with intention he sees it as a tool that can be used for good or for ill right a double-edged sword and he's urging us to be conscious of its impact on our minds yeah our relationships and our planet i like that analogy of technology as a tool mm -hmm. it's like a hammer right you can use it to build a house. Or to break something. Exactly. It all depends on the intention of the user. That's a great way to put it. We need to be the ones wielding the tools. Not the other way around. <sighs> not letting them control us. Langan wants us to be the masters of our tools, not slaves to them. Okay. I can get behind that. It's about taking responsibility, being conscious creators. This whole conversation about the human singularity yeah. and our potential for evolution mm -hmm. has really got me thinking about individual responsibility. It's not something that just happens to us, is it? It requires effort, conscious choice. Exactly. Langan's vision isn't about sitting back and waiting for some external force to usher in a new era. Right. We can't just sit around and wait for things to change. It's about each of us taking ownership of our own growth and evolution. Yeah, like that. Cultivating our own consciousness and making choices that align with the future we want to create. So it's like we're all holding a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And it's up to each of us to figure out where our piece fits. And how it contributes to the bigger picture. That's a great way to put it. It's a collective effort. But it starts with individual action. This has been an incredible journey. It really has. And I feel like we've only just scratched the surface of Langan's thought-provoking ideas. There's so much more to explore. If any of this has resonated with you, yeah. I encourage you to delve deeper into his work. There's a whole universe of fascinating concepts out there waiting to be discovered. And who knows, maybe this deep dive has sparked a new way of thinking. A new perspective. A new perspective on your own journey of self-discovery and conscious evolution. That's what we hope for. And on that note, we'll leave you with this final thought. Okay, yeah, it's worth it. In a world overflowing with information and competing visions of the future, yeah. which path resonates most with you? What speaks to your heart? What role do you want to play in shaping the world to come? Big questions. They are, but they're worth asking. Absolutely. Keep those questions in mind as you navigate your own journey. And until next time, happy exploring. <laughs>